Hello and welcome back. Before I start talking about the direct and inverse problems at the surface of the, ell the ellipsoid, I need to define ellipsoidal triangle. Consider two points I and J at the surface of the ellipsoid. Point I has the geodetic coordinates of phi I and lambda I, and point J in the coordinates of phi j and lambda j. Phi is geodetic latitude and lambda is geodetic longitude. As I explained before, when I say geodetic, we mean that the Earth is ellipsoid. So we know the two meridians go through the points i and j as you see here, and these latitudes are defined uh, this meridian place. So consider that this angle is phi and this line is normal to the ellipsoid, both of them. And we know already that the normal to ellipsoid does not go through the center of the ellipsoid, neither for the other side here. This angle is 90 degrees, it means that the rotation axis of the ellipsoid is perpendicular to the equatorial plane. Therefore, this angle will be 90 degrees minus phi, both of sides. So for this part, 90 degrees minus phi i, and the other side, 90 degrees minus phi j. But since this is not a sphere, this arc, which is in front of this, this angle, is not equal to 90 degrees minus phi i, and neither this side is not 90 degrees minus phi j, because we do not have a sphere. It's an ellipsoid. So it's not the central angle is not equal to the arc in front of the angle. The distance between the points Is a geodesic, and the geodetic azimuth is defined as the angle between the local meridian and the geodesic. Lambda j minus lambda i, as you see here, which is the angle between the meridians. So it's the same with the spherical datum because the ellipsoid is a rotational ellipsoid. And when we look at it from above, we will see a circle. So this angle is the same with the spherical triangle, but not these arcs. Direct and inverse problems on an ellipsoidal datum are very similar to those in spherical and planar data. In all of them, we have a noun point i here with coordinates phi i and lambda i, and we measure some quantities like geodesic line and geodetic azimuth from this point i to the point j to determine the coordinates of the point j. This problem is called direct problem. In inverse problem, we have the coordinates of the points. It means that we have two noun points, and we want to determine the geodesic line, or the geodesic distance, and the geodetic azimuth between the points. The direct problem on an ellipsoidal datum is done by using this formula. As you see, the geodetic latitude and geodetic longitude of the second point or the point J is related to the geodetic latitude and longitude of the first point by these corrections. So it means that we have to add something to the noun geodetic coordinates here, point I, and also the longitude.
magnitude of the point i to get the coordinates for the point j. And if you look at these terms or these correction terms, you will see that they are function of v and u parameters, as you see here, t and eta. And I have defined them here. As you see, Sij is a geodesic line between the point, and alpha is the geodetic azimuth in Washington. So you have u and alpha, and you have sine and cosine here. And eta is also have the ellipsoids parameters, like the second eccentricity. And t is defined at tangent of phi i, phi of the first point. If you can use these parameters and compute them and set them back into the formula, you will get the correction, or you will understand how much you have to add to the coordinate of the noun point to get the coordinate for the unknown points. In order to understand how these formulas are applied, it's better to solve a numerical example. Consider the geodetic latitude and longitudes of a point, you see here, the coordinates, at WGS84 ellipsoid with these parameters. Consider that the azimuth and the geodesic distance between this point, point I, and another point is the azimuth, and this is the distance. Compute the geodetic latitude and longitude of the other point. So simply, first we compute the radius of prime vertical for the first point, point I, and we come to that. It's simple, we have already seen how, how to compute this. And we can compute V and U parameters based on the ellipsoidal distance or geodesic, dis geodesic distance and the azimuth, as you see here. Eta 2 and T we compute based on the formula. It is just enough to insert these values to the formula. And since the coordinate of the first point was 55 degrees, 10 minutes and 23 seconds, and when we computed this term, which is in radian in nature, we change it to the digit to the degree unit, and we will get this value for the coordinate of the for, to, to, for the latitude of the point J. Similarly, we can apply the same principle for getting the longitudes of the point J. The inverse problem on an ellipsoidal datum is not as easy as the spherical datum. Here we have a coordinates of, the, of both points, phi i and phi j, as you see here, the lambda j and lambda i, we have them. We compute u and v, and delta phi we have to compute as well, as you see the formula here, and the parameters of this delta lambda delta phi we have already defined, and if we compute u and v, we can com compute the geodetic azimuth based on that, and the geodesic distance. So, what the problem is that for computing u and v, I need to come. I need u and v themselves. So it means that you want to compute u, but you need u and v. You want to compute v. You need u and v here. In, in this case, this this formula should be solved iteratively. So we have to have some approximate value for the point, this delta phi and delta lambda. We insert them in the formula, compute u of v, as you see here, and we will get a new azimuth. Thereafter, we use that azimuth and also delta lambda that we have already 
computed, we get the geodetic, geodesic distance. At the next round, we will update delta phi and delta lambda based on the formula. We will compute u and v again. We compute the geodetic azimuth. Use the geodetic azimuth to get the geodesic distance. The new geodetic distance and azimuth are used to compute delta phi, delta lambda, and u and v. After that, u and v comes to compute delta to compute geodetic azimuth. And geodetic azimuth with other parameters are used to compute the geodesic line. This process is iterated until the solution converts. It means that the, the azimuth and the geodetic exam will not change by iteration. This is the inverse problem of the surface of ellipsoid. Let us solve a numerical example. Consider geodetic latitude and longitudes of two points at the surface of the WGS84 ellipsoid with these parameters. You have the coordinates here. Compute the geodetic azimuth and the distance between these points. So at the first step, we have to consider that delta phi and delta lambda are zeros. In that case, we will compute these two parameters u and v. It's important that you consider that this angle should be in radian, radian units. Radian. We compute the geodetic azimuth, the first approximation, we get this value. And then the geodetic azimuth, the first approximation. Then we use the geodetic azimuths to compute v1 and u1. And after that, we use them to compute delta phi 1 and delta lambda 1, the first iteration. And you will see the corrections here. Now I have delta phi and delta lambda. I can compute a new u and v. When I have new u and v, I can compute a new geodetic azimuth, as you see here. And from the geodetic azimuth and these parameters, I can compute the geodesic line. So I repeat this process until the solution converts. The next iteration, in the next iteration, I get this value for the azimuth and this one for the geodesic distance. The third iteration, I get azimuth this one and the, this distance. Fourth, inter fourth iteration for both fifth iteration. Six iterations, seven iteration, eight iteration, nine, ten, and eleven. As you see the last look at the last two, you will see that the azimuth will not change and the distance, geodesic distance, will not change either. So the solution is converged. Or the solution converts.